to Mages and Murder Dads, the best show dedicated to the games beyond Baldur's Gate. This is episode 59, and we're playing Torment Tides of Numenera. I'm Cameron. I'm Danny, and contrary to the promises made to me, this isn't the last episode. Uh, listeners to uh, perhaps this show, but definitely our monthly podcast, will note that I've repeatedly assured Danny <laughs> <laughs> that our next time, our next session of play... You know, where we sit down and play and then record would be the last one. And lo and behold, having going off my memories of the time I played it when it came out and um, not looking at a walkthrough, I was um, in, inaccurate. Your memories failed you. This is a game about deep time, which means that uh, wow. even though you only played it, what, two years ago? Mm, yeah, two, three years ago. Yeah, it's taken us long enough to rec record this that like another year has, has <laughs> added to the calendar. I'm pretty sure because it came out in February, didn't it? I guess. Uh, uh, I'll look it up while you're talking. But no, it feels like it's older than three years because you just feel like you've been through eight worlds, and here you are on the ninth world. Mm -hmm. This came out in 2017. Yes, February 28th, 2017. So as we have been recording this, we have been lapped by time. <laughs> <laughs> one one more year mm -hmm. um but in a general sense yeah i was wrong i i just had some uh in my head i just had that we were at the very end but we don't we got like one quest left so there's gonna be a couple more episodes of the series i'm sure you're all excited we've gotten some comments on the old youtube that haven't that that to to their credit have not really been critical of our distaste of this uh but they have been some real agree to disagree mm. kind of feelings of i just don't see how y'all are getting here you know that's what they're saying to us um yeah, i think what? uh different there's a saying different mm -hmm. strokes for different folks there you go what does that refer to like uh if you're in a rowboat not everybody's uh cadence is going to be the mm -hmm. same in order to progress but you know everybody can help contribute to navigating the boat that's my well, understanding if one, if one person's bad at it then you just end up going in circles i think you have to be egregious i think you have to <laughs> you have to be egregiously bad at it right no you ever been in a boat no i have been in a boat yeah one person's just gotta be a little bit better than the other person on a long enough timeline, sure. True. Right. Like, uh, <laughs> it depends on the size of the body of water and how you, bad yes. that person is. That's what I'm asking you. Have you ever been trapped on a boat for 20 days? <laughs> Have you ever been gotcha. attempting to actually cross the Atlantic Ocean in a canoe? Mm. No, I haven't. Um, no. Just a quick update for everybody. Nothing big happening in the Steiniverse. Uh, since last episode. No. That I can think of. We did have a long discussion about the Steiniverse and the possibility of interviewing uh, contemporary politicians uh, mm. on our on our upcoming charity stream this summer. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I think we decided we're still going to put the uh, we're still going to put the tough questions about where they stand. On uh, Jill Stein. On yeah. Jill Stein. On the her glorious policies. <laughs> um, Danny, what's the story so far? How, can, can we can we flip the script and you just tell me what you think the story is so far? Uh, guy fall out of sky. Mm -hmm. Guy stand up. Say hey, friends. Friends say hello. Uh, me no good. Me me better and me no good. Uh, pick friend. Uh, free child discover murder go to bottom of place find all things in bottom of place learn about self go in brain go in skyship go in tomb go in 
other place with many friends go away from Big Giant Monster, go into Big Gut. Mm. That's the beginning of the episode. How about that? That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So uh, in this episode, we're in the bloom. The bloom's we're, like, we're, uh, we're, we're Jonah. The what? We're Jonah. Who? The biblical Jonah. Mm, you're going to have to explain this to me. So there was a mighty warrior named Jonah who wielded Excalibur, which was given to oh. him by the Lord of the Sea. Jonah was swallowed by a great eagle. And he was caught in the eagle's gut. And he had to do several fetch quests in the gut before uh, before the game decided he was eligible to be freed. Yeah, so, to do Omni Slash at the end. Omni Slash at the end. He had to he had to do the Cave of Trials. He had to get mm. like go to the Cave of Trials. He had to wield the Levantine sword. Um, he had to have, uh, ha- cut the Gordian knot. He had to have the little child with blue hair and little cat ears in his party to cast Gremlin like five times in a row to be freed. So, so it, so it's like that in the sense of we are also trapped in some sort of big stomach. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, I think, look, it's the Bible. There's not going to be a one-to-one correspondence here. Yeah, the the mall is like a big. Um, I I. What do you think it looks like from the outside? What do I? I, I bet it looks like a langolier, like a giant galactic langolier, like a big Pac Man. Yeah, that's my interpretation of what it would look like from the outside. Yeah, because this is so the mall is like <laughs> up underneath Sage's Cliffs, right? Oh no! It is. It is. It is absolutely because in Sage's Cliffs, in the um, the caravansary or whatever it's called, where you can get on the sky ship, there is a door to get to the Mimovira's place. I think that's a gateway. I don't think so. It's you a think the Maw is not physically attached to the Mimovira's Ooh. place? No, I think that that gateway from Sage's Cliffs to the Mimovira's place is not a, it's not, it's not a simple hallway. I think it's a dimensional door of some sort because I talk to people who, like I talked to the innkeeper who was stranded there mm-hmm. and it sounded to me like the, uh, the bloom was beyond the beyond for her. Hmm. Well, maybe from where she came from originally. In my mind, and I don't know why I think this, but I thought it was literally buried in the cliff beneath Sage's Cliffs. Like it was like in the earth. Hmm. Like a, like Dunny or something. I mean, I don't view that as less possible than any other interpretation. (laughs) I just feel like we're all like, this is very, remember last episode where I talk about just like, floating among moats of pixie dust here in terms of mm-hmm. like uh my attachment my like personal attachment and the stakes to like the plot and location and like how one location ends up linking to another mm-hmm. that's how i feel so i was like yeah sure it's in sage's cliffs no it was inside you the whole time like i don't know Oh wow that's beautiful mm-hmm. um well yeah so it's like a big giant fleshy zone that is chock full of mouths and tunnels, and it just does whatever the hell it wants, and people live there. It seems like a bad place to live. It seems like real estate values would not be able... It wouldn't be a good investment, A, because at any point, like, the in- some intestines could close off and be like, well, I can't get to my house anymore. Fuck. Well, it does seem... I mean, th- this is kind of my... You know, you're just talking about kind of like motes of fairy dust. And I don't even know if this is like a critique of the writing necessarily that I'm about to say. It is just something that is worth noting. If if I'm in a place that seems cool, but it doesn't make any sense, it's probably not a good game environment. Mm. And that's how I feel about the Maw. It's cool. Like, if you were describing it to me in a pitch meeting, I would be like... That is very cool. So, yeah, it's a big living 
body it's not like a metaphor you know this isn't like a crystalline cavern or something that has awoken minds it's just a big fleshy body that does all kinds of weird stuff i would be like that sounds cool but when you start building it it like doesn't look particularly interesting to me conceptually it introduces a lot more problems like everyone who lives here is just at the at the whim of this big creature um like, it has this sort of pseudo-magic to it, but it doesn't seem like it's related to the other magic that, that is on the Ninth World that we've already talked about before, like the tides and all that stuff. It just feels very... Um, it feels weird for weird's sake. Yeah, I think than, that... like, necessary. Look, have you ever played a game where you were... where there was a level inside a living being? Well, I've played Kingdom Hearts, and there's a level inside Monstro, mm-hmm. so yes. Yeah, Zelda Ocarina of Time has an entire child in dungeon where you are inside Jabu Jabu, which is a large, like, fish monster, right? Mm-hmm. Like, this this feels, mm. this is not utterly alien to me. I think that this is a, mm. this is a thing that you can pull off one way or another, right? But the issue is that it, it's, it's just as you said. Your initial reaction, ooh, that's cool, right? That is one half of the equation, right? There's the initial reaction and how do you implement it and make it feel in some way. You give it texture in a way that the environment makes sense with the characters you meet. And that's that, that to me is the bridge that uh, is the gap that is not bridged here. Yeah, that's a million percent of what's going on. So we show up, and this dude named Dracogen is just th- there. Like, he is just waiting at the gate for us to come out. And not to, like, spoil for, through the end of the episode or anything, but I don't feel like I learned anything more about Dracogen. Like, I learned more information, but not why he was there and why he's waiting on me or anything like that. Did did you ever learn anything? Yeah, you learn, like, things he's done before, but you don't learn anything about his aspirations or the present, right? Yeah, or, like, why he was waiting for you. Yes, which would in- imply, like, this is, a, this is an entity with their own goals, with their own dreams, hopes, etc., and that they're the, like, so the, 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 that's the future question. The present question is, okay, well, why are you there in particular? Why are you just chilling out? Greet, and, and why are you the representative that greets us here? As opposed to, I don't know, like, Mimavira's guards, right? Oh, mm-hmm. strange, strange people appear. That makes sense to me, right? It makes sense to me. Yeah, it is, uh, it, there's no, like, you're, you're greeted with plot, Right, you're greeted with like, all right, you're here. Here's the quest you got to do, as opposed to, all right, you're here. Here's an environment that you're in that you need to kind of orient yourself in, Um, which is just yeah. It it feels the further we get in the game, the more rushed the game feels, in the sense of like the more stuff. I I don't know. The more things feel like it is not a world, but like a linear set of hallways, just in an open environment. Yeah. No, it's a, uh, it is interesting. But so what is the kind of like, what information does Dracogen give us? So we immediately go into the bloom. I think that one person in my party may have like said something about, oh, the bloom before we got zapped. But we're in the bloom. What does, what is like the, what does Dracogen tell us? Uh, I mean, I just remember the the fetch questy part of it, right? So he says, <laughs> "I need a thing called the magmatic amulet." Mm-hmm. Go get it. Or it's weird. It's actually it's spelled anulet. Oh, oh, really? Anulet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. He says you got to go to a place called Ascension, and it's in Ascension. And lo and behold, Ascension is just two screens away. There's a little bit of like a process to get there, mm-hmm. but it's not that much of a process um did you walk around and talk to any of these other people other than drakage in here uh the next person over was being accosted by shadowy figures hmm and there was an I innkeep don't think i saw that yeah there was an innkeep they immediately run away as you like approach hmm. uh but anyway there was a woman being assaulted by two sh- two like they they look like i don't know changelings are like shadow people hmm 
uh, was the was the um, was the character model. And uh, I talked to this person, and this person's name. Oh gosh, it might be gone forever, but um, this person's name is uh, not relevant. <laughs> okay. And uh, this person's like, yeah, I come from a land really far away from here, like way far away from here. And I was a noble, and we knew about this ship that would occasionally like zap into existence where we lived, and uh, and we knew that it had a schedule. Every seventy three hours, it would zap in and then zap out somewhere, and it was like a big touristy machine. And so my friends and I got ready, and we were like, "Oh, we're gonna go on a fun little spring break trip." And uh, we got in it, and then it broke down, and it broke down here. And, that, and I've just been here the rest of that time, and all my friends are dead now. <laughs> and it sucks. It's just everything sucks now. I have He's an inn. beat up in the street. Yeah, and I, I, have a, yeah I, have a, I have an inn. The inn is the tent we're in. And oh. she charges like 300 or, yeah, 320, like 60 gold pieces or currency a piece to, to rest there. Which I do that because the only thing that prevents me from getting into combat is using all of my ability points <laughs> on every single Which you also encounter need for combat. <laughs> yes, no, it's an either or, right? Like you're this is the parasitic element of this game, right? <laughs> is that the same resource you use to avoid combat is the resource you need in combat? It's so elegantly designed. Yeah, yeah, it's a real, it's a struggle, I would say. Hmm. But yeah, I uh, I talked to that person. I don't think I... Do you talk to anybody else in this area? Yeah, I talked to uh, a couple people. So I... Well, I guess I, two things happened. So I talked to this robot thing, this like murder robot that's there. Mm. Oh, I this, saw like, that. I saw the construct, yeah. Yeah, and he's like, I'm eternal and I live forever. And uh, I think that if I kill enough things, eventually the maw will eat me and destroy me. Because I cannot be unmade because I'm immortal and a robot. And I remember all of the murder I've ever done because it's in my programming. The end. Bummer. <laughs> yeah, it, it feels... So this is, the, this is the problem with, like, infinite timelines and characters that are immortal, right? Is, like, this person is cool and interesting, but as soon as I talked to it and got the story, I just thought, oh, this is, like, a less interesting version of the genocide. Yeah, yeah. From no, before, right? they really, uh, they really stole their own thunder with, with putting that fellow in the first screen. I think, uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, so, so yeah. So I did that. Um, and then there was an additional person who, um... Or, or it was the, like, there were slaves. You didn't talk to any of the slaves or any of that Ooh, stuff? Ooh, I didn't know about any slaves here. So there are some, um, it's like a pit that's covered over in, like, a laser field or something like that. And, oh, I uh, saw that, but I, I did not look. Oh, no, there there's slavery going on? Yeah, and so the, the argument, or what happens, right, is that they say, we... I forget how they phrase it. The so the what the maw does when it when it uh, or or what the bloom. Gosh, it has maws in it. Yes, and these are literally open mouths. They're little ulcers in the lining of various walls of the bloom in which you're in that can potentially lead somewhere else. But they're also they also have a strange psychic element to it, and they are attracted to some things and not to others. And there's also it's not just like a purely biological like ooh you get you get like gobbled up and you go down a tube. Like there's a teleporter thing, I like to it also. Yeah. So people show up they and they you know will stake out a claim in front of a maw. I guess. And what you do is because maws connect all of time and space, right? They can kind of go anywhere. You just throw people in there <laughs> and see what they bring out. And so there's a system of, of crime and punishment that is based on slavery in this world. And this is partially why I thought that, um, that this was connected to Sage's Cliffs because, um, 
criminals in Sage's Cliffs who were like murderers and thieves and like the worst, quote unquote, worst criminals, right? You get an option. You can be executed or you can be sent as a slave to the Maw. If they send you as a slave to the Maw, you get purchased and you fulfill a requirement. You go into a Maw. And then if you come back, you're free. Hmm. Yeah. And so they all volunteered for it. Um, and theoretically, it's a good deal. Although, if you go into a maw, you could be, like, deleted. Or your <laughs> body could be destroyed. Or you could die. Or, so, you know, you could be tortured for eternity. I mean, anything could happen in there. Yeah, it seems bad. Um, it seems bad. And slavery also seems bad. But, um, so I talked to the guy who is, like, the slaver, the slave seller. And, um... I, so, it was a long conversation, but Rin, that child who's with me, who was also a slave, right, if you remember, all the way back, she was uh, enslaved, and I freed her. She was like, look, you gotta buy a slave. You gotta do that. We gotta free at least one person. Mm. So I go through all this stuff, and I go through a long conversation, and it all comes down to, I get to buy a slave. I spend all of my money purchasing one slave, and he gets out, and he says, oh yeah, uh, I was a thief, but I don't have a job. And I need a job. So, and if you don't help me get one, I'm just going to go back to stealing again. And I'll get enslaved again. And he kind of gives you a big shrug, and he's like, well, hope you can deal with that. Bummer. Yeah. So, I think, I, I did not pursue this, but I remember the last time I played this, that you can actually go get him a job. And so I, I, I think he can do that. But I didn't try it. I just thought, all right, I understand what's happening here. I've done my duty. But that did open up a conversation tree with Rin, where she finally, because if you remember her story, right? Sure. She's from, she's from a place that's far away from Sage's Cliffs. She doesn't know where she came from. All of her memories are erased. But the place that she's from is full of gods. Like, everything is a god. Like, there's a god of, a, you know, a tree can be a god. Or you get a, a, god. Can be a god. And you get a god. Uh, underneath your your seat, a god. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. And so she's been carrying one around in her pocket this whole time, named All. And he's a little he's a little stone. And finally, through a conversation with All in this episode, after I freed the slave, uh, it is revealed that All has been blocking her memories. To keep her from remembering that she ran away from home on purpose. And then was got teleported into slavery, basically. Teleported via the Maw? No, uh, unclear. Unclear. I didn't really pick that up. Like, how she got from her home to enslavement. But, yeah. Th like, she made a choice. She was not kidnapped. Nothing happened to her. She left her home on purpose. And uh, her little rock god thought that would be so distressing for her to know, to feel guilty that she got herself into this scenario. The rock god he, blocked her memory. Yeah, you like erased her memories, but gave him back. And she threw him away and then went and picked him back up again. And that was the end of the conversation. Mmm. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, it's interesting. I like but, the yeah. little pebble god. That's a fun idea in your it, pocket. That is a... I think if you're going to rip something out of this game and put it into, like, a tabletop game, that's the thing you rip off. That there's an NPC with a pebble god that talks to them. <laughs> it's very good. Do you rip off the NPC, or do you just rip off the pebble? Oh, I think you rip off the pebble. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you do both, right? You have a villain that's got a pebble god, and then you, when you kill the villain or whatever, someone picks up the pebble god, and it also talks to you. Hmm. And it and it it needs uh it was once a big and powerful god and, and now it's been reduced to a pebble and it needs to get there again. You gotta and do it talks like for a it. stoner. Bro. Is that how they talk? Pun intended. It's cause it's a pebble. Is that your uh, is that your Statler and Waldorf? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh,
Let's just confuse Uh, people that fast forward to the 30 minute mark of an episode and it's just met with a full five minutes of Stathor Waldo. Oh, 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 oh. Sure, I'm sure my wife loves it from the other room. I'm I'm 100% certain she can hear that. Uh, but she anyway, can't wait so, until you get your own studio. I know. I, I'm 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 looking at uh, at soundproofing solutions. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, so that's kind of the first screen, and so he says you got to go to a trading post. That's what Dracogen says to to go get the magmatic magmatic annulet. You gotta go to the trading post. You gotta go to so trading post. You Once you get there, take a right. It's in Tuesday morning. It's like right next to Crate and Barrel. But in any case, you gotta go to a place called the trading post. But you go, and he's like, "Oh, you, you just follow the trail north." So I do that, and you get to a little place, and there's a there's a little caravan and a bunch of little merchants there with a large pack animal, I would say, and they say, "Oh, well." The way's closed, like this this little uh, esophageal, you know, flap clo- closed, and the trading post is gone. So I guess in order to get there, we gotta we gotta just hurl ourselves into various various tubes. Yeah, good luck finding the tubes. Basically, is what they say. <laughs> yeah, like, go get them tubes, mm-hmm. and then they peace out. Yeah. So I am left with just hitting the M button. Looking for things that they mentioned. Mm-hmm. I know that they mentioned, uh, like, the Nephilim. The, it's not the Nephilim. That's a uh, cycle of magic cards. Um, oh, gosh. Find a maw. Updated my journal. Mm-hmm. Do, do, do. No, it might be uh, ne- Nephilim. Nephilim. It might be that. Is That's it really? There's no the way. Bible. That's from the Bible. That's not biblical. That's Wizards of the Coast. No, it's biblical. You should look it up. Google it. Mark Rosewater, 316. <laughs> no, but it is. It is from the Bible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but so anyway, that, so I just look the at the map. And slump. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so I go there. I go to the first thing mentioned, which is in the bottom right, and I am encountered, and I am, this is the first acceptable crisis to me that I am like thrown into. Uh Uh-huh. Yes. And it's because I don't have to hit anything with a sword. Yeah, this is an interesting... So you like walk into a fight that's already happening, right? You walk into a nascent fight, right? Mm. Like something where it's about to, as the kids say these days, pop off. Like Mm. it's about to pop off. Yeah. But it has not yet popped off. The top Um, is firmly fastened. Well, so that's what I... So this is cool. Like, this is a good use of the crisis system, right? But really what it it comes down to is you talking to people in a sequence back and forth. Yes. Is there any way to fail this other than choosing to fail it or taking too long? You have two choices. Uh, You can either convince the instigators which it is uh implied that the mutants are the instigators you can convince the instigators to call it off or you can uh just choose a side and then fight on that side Mm. i think in order to convince the 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 so-called mutants to uh to kind of back off you, it does help to talk to the uh, Minivaran guards first. Mm-hmm. Um, when you do that, you kind of like lower the temperature in the room, as it were. But no, yeah. it is pretty easy to like make this work. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I just, I thought it was really complicated. And then I just realized I was just talking to one, then the other, then the one, then the other, then the one, then the other. And it was over, you know? Yeah. I didn't feel like there were very many choices, but I do think it's interesting that like it's doing a conversation within the crisis system. It um, is the most explicit use of the combat mechanics in that the threat, the explicit threat is we're going to make you fucking fight 
if you don't do if you don't if you don't solve this problem, which is very effective because fighting it was a, is it was a big motivator for it me. It was a huge motivating factor for me to be and like, I, okay. Yeah, and in just a minute, I made a choice. So I, I did something that caused a fight and I went, you know what? I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do it the harder way. <laughs> so I don't have to do this fight. Like like the conceptually harder way. Um but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, mm-hmm. so um, we didn't really talk about the, what the Memo Vera is. So the Memo Vera is like the the mob boss of the Bloom, who's like kind of pseudo controlling the Bloom or in conversation with the Bloom, and she's just like the Tony Soprano. Yeah, but yes, all fair? of that is true. The only uh, thing is we're we're picking up hints that uh, she is no longer in the Bloom's favor. Yeah, um, it's unclear why that's happening, and later on that kind of pays off with the Dracogen, right? Because the Dracogen kind of explicitly says that's why it or he or she or they um, is is asking you to get the Analyt. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, I think may, maybe we'll learn more about that next episode. I think uh, in a general sense. The- so yeah, so you so. Did you in this in this area with the mutants? So mm-hmm. I like also stop the fight. So there's a giant spaceship here, and there is a maw. Yes, I went to the maw. Okay. And the maw is not interested in me, but you can tell that the maw is like getting its little tentacles towards Alagern. Oh. So I intimidate Alagern. I said, "Go, go, step over there." <laughs> Allegren, and it was a critical success. So I got all my points back. And Allegren says, "Okay, I'm just laughing this off." And they start, <laughs> they start wrapping their way around him and in him, like they phase through him mm-hmm. and start grabbing him real bad. And he starts screaming. He's like, "Oh, please pull me back!" And then I pick the option. Ah, just let it go on a little longer. <laughs> just let this happen. And Allegren is like, "Oh God, it's bad." <laughs> It's so, I'm so unhappy with this. And uh, then the tentacles let him go and a little teleporter appears in front of the maw. And Allegurn is like, I am really upset at you, please. And I said, I promise I won't do it again. And Allegurn says, why would I ever trust your promise not to do it again when you just did this? But I, for reasons I am not going to explain, still have to stick with you. So, meh. And then I get a message. Allegorn really doesn't like you now. Allegorn is mad. Allegorn's mad at you. And hmm. uh, when you go through that maw, you go to a weird like Starship Enterprise. That's what I was mentioning when I said Starship Enterprise. Whoa, hold on. So you're not talking about the other spaceship that's on the other side of the map? I didn't go in a spaceship on the other side of the map. Oh. I went to I an actual you... thing in orbit of a planet that is not the ninth world. Oh, okay. Well, tell me about that. Well, like you go in there, there's nothing there. There's like a there's a bridge, and a captain's there. He's like, "Hey, here we are orbiting this planet." And there's definitely a uh, a quest here that can involve Dracogen's past. Hmm. Because they're like, "Yeah, you can you can tour this spacecraft, but." You can't go into this special room because this jerk, like, tried to steal our stuff. And we say... His well, name's Dracogen. And they, exactly. His name was Dracogen, and they're still upset about it. There is a way to finish this quest without ever getting the magmatic amulet, which is doing a quest in here. Uh, oh. I did not figure that out until I went ahead and already had the magmatic amulet. So I did not like complete this quest in the Starship Enterprise. But there is a giant window where you're just like looking out into space and at the surface of a planet. Hmm. Yeah. That's cool. That uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, that's the kind of cool stuff that's in this game, right? And I did get a sense when I toward the end of the analyt quest, I was like, oh, I. I might not have to give this up. I might be able to do some other stuff here. Yeah. And I just kind of took the path of least resistance. But I did think that was... I, there were hints already in the thing, so I'm glad to know that like this is at least one of those potential pathways. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, so I went into the crashed spaceship that's on the other side of this map. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't remember where I got the first thing. It was on something... Fe- oh, I 
do know, uh, when you're up near the trading post, there's like a big, I don't know, pulsing pustule, like mm. a human-sized one. Did you see that? Yes. Okay. Did you do the little quest where you like feed it bad memories? I did not. Okay. So you just, uh, you click on it and it, you like think bad thoughts, like sad and, and bad thoughts. And one of those big, like, emotion-eating creatures that we saw at the end of the f- fifth eye or third eye or whatever it's called, the fifth eye tavern, um, it pops out and it goes somewhere. So it's probably going to do some murders or something. It's bad. and But it was feeding on an artifact. And so if you go in this crashed spaceship, you can, you can uh, it's full of holograms that are alive. Here's a, this is a real interesting quest. It's full of living, thinking holograms, okay? Mm -hmm. They are like the, I guess, people who died on the spaceship, or they're people who uploaded their consciousness or something. And so you could just go to the computer and rip out their power source. (laughs) Lord. And jam jam it onto your other artifact. And I did that. Oh. Yeah. So I just, they all disappeared. Well, they're gone now. But rip, I jammed it on there, and I got a thing called the transdimensional scalpel, which basically is just like a little small lightsaber. Mm. It's cool. You can wield it as a weapon, but even better, any maw that you approach, you can just cut it open with the transdimensional scalpel. Oh. Instead of having to fulfill whatever its desire is, right? For oh, that. Lord. Yes. But, so that is very cool, right? Sure. In a general sense. That may, that means I wouldn't have had to make Allegorn so mad or do the terrible thing I'm about to have to do to a poor militia captain. Okay. Well, let me tell you. If you use the transdimensional scalpel to open it, the um, the bloom attacks you and summons monsters that you have to kill. No. Oh. And that's that's objectively bad. So um oh, I well, for that's the next a bummer. One, that's a bummer right? that the game gives you like a side quest that gives you a way to sidestep like mechanics in the game and it's not actually a shortcut it's a long cut yeah it adds time and so i i like went and i was like yes i get to use this to cut through i don't have to do any quest to like get through this thing or i've already done my quest i guess i should say and then i get there and it's like four enemies plop down from the ceiling and i was like okay well i guess i'm Loading a save game, <laughs> <laughs> going back and doing this some oh, other way. Oh, that's rough. Um, yeah, so if you go into the Chirgen Slump, which is kind of like a swamp, I guess, uh, with a military camp in it, I just goaded a man into challenging <laughs> a giant mouth. Yeah, I intimidated. I no, I I deceived him. I said you need to face your fears. That's what I did too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what I kind of feel like I goaded him. I was like, you know what? You need to resolve this. Mm-hmm. Um, but it did look like you could like have a drinking contest with him and get him drunk and then make him do it. And that seemed worse to me. It's a it's a rough situation. I do th- I I have limited empathy, or my my empathy is mitigated by like some of the things he said about we're swords for hire. We'll do we'll kill whoever you want. Yeah, he's a deserter from the endless battle. Ah, uh, yes. The endless battle. Definitely not the blood war. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, the not blood war. The not blood war. The the meat and bone war. Mm-hmm. The saliva scuffle. The saliva scuffle. Mm. Mm. It's great. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, I told him and he got eaten alive and then a uh, portal opened up and it took me right to the trading post. In which there was nothing. In, yeah. Oh God. The the ultimate. Uh, you ever you ever had a quest where your objective is to get a place, and then immediately when you get to that place, there's nothing there, but there is a portal to a crystal land. Yeah. That you were never prepped for. That there's like, oh well, there, I guess there's a crystal land. Yeah, it's happened to me once. <laughs> One solid time. So yeah. So I just walk through the trading post and I go to the crystal land. And um, it's called God. You, do you have it written? No, you don't have it written. No, oh, Ascension. It's called there. Ascension. There we go. And it's generally kind of cool, right? Because I'm not quite sure why it exists. I didn't pick up any lore about why Ascension is here, but of course there are cultists here. Mm-hmm. 
like, you know, it's it's the ninth world, there's gonna be cultists. But there's also this giant, like, crystal... M- mineral deposit. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he's kind of, like, polished. He's got some machine stuff on him, too, right? Like, mm. you know, he's kind of, like, both and. Um, but yeah, and it's called the Oracle. But, but the Oracle it, has flown. <laughs> Yeah, but the or yeah, the oracle isn't there. So you are you. So basically, this is a giant crystal computer. That's and like you are of, yeah, and you're the way like what I picked up on is you're talking to the hardware, but the software is uninstalled. No, I don't think so. You were it's like it's all software, right? Mm-hmm. And so you were just talking to one piece of software that can't talk to another piece of software. There we go. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like you're you're speaking to. You need to access Photoshop, but you're talking to Word. Mm-hmm. Um, but but that's what's so good is it's like the speaking software, right? And it knows that the Oracle is dead, mm. or it doesn't work, right? And so it keeps telling you, like, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do any oracularizing for you. But then every time it speaks, you receive like a prophecy right afterward. Mm-hmm. And so it's almost like it's subconscious, like the Oracle is there, but it can't see the Oracle program. And so it, the machine is speaking to you despite the fact that you can't really speak to it. Yeah, the Oracle is only able to communicate with you one way. And there's basically like a, a, the, 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 this program that you are able to communicate with is blind to the fact that there is still some of the Oracle's programming like lying around, spitting out answers. Yeah, and I forget, what, what do they call these things? Or like... They're not pips, but there's something like that. Yeah, they're they're it's a it's a made up word that sounds like a geode. Like that's how I, I kind of thought of them. Mm. But they're like these little crystals popping out of the ground. Yeah, they're like well, they're like crystals with a interface. With, like, with what? They have kind of an interface to them. You can interact with them. Yeah, but they have like thoughts and feelings. That's what that's what I'm trying. to Oh yeah, to. no, well, I mean that's they, a given. We're in the ninth world, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but of they course, kind of like you minerals are are sentient. Yeah, well, I, I, that's the thing is like they they got like good vibes because <laughs> mm. they're like thumbs up, thumbs up, bro. Mm. So yes, yeah, so you like talk to the computer and you activate all of the pips or whatever they're called geodes, and then you just slowly but surely walk through this level until you can get to a crystal or a cave. Sorry, that's full of crystals with a puzzle in it. Yeah. What'd you do? How'd you solve this puzzle? First thing I did is I smashed the shit out of a machine. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. And then and then it immediately spawned four enemies. The first enemy like popped up and then AoE'd attack my whole party for 10 damage. And then I reloaded. <laughs> I also like, I mean, so you get up to this machine and there's like seven options, right? It's like inspect the, the round button. <laughs> look at the, look at the two um, look at the symbology of two parallel lightning bolts. And I literally was just like, smash the machine. <laughs> Option eight, smash it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, it, like some of those little crystal guys. So I, I also reloaded a save and I went in there. Yeah, and- you've got to like turn on the incubation chamber or the stasis chamber, then read all of the journal entries and then go I do appreciate that like I feel like if this game were made 15 years prior you'd have had to have noted the actual order of the buttons you had to push and it would have been expressly said in one of the journal entries now in 2017 when this was made uh it's just like the option you end up using is oh use your knowledge from the journal entries to try to gain access yeah like it abstracts um. it yeah, swipe your tattoo. That's mm-hmm. literally one of the last steps. And, uh, you, and so basically you find out, actually, in the journal entries, I think they're a little bit interesting. So you, or the changing god, made this little chamber and borrowed the magmatic annulet from the dracogen. And there are multiple dracogens. I don't really understand that. But there are multiple ones, and basically it's just like the dracogen is very powerful. In fact, maybe more powerful than the changing god. And uh, it's kind of like a devil, you know. You can you can you gotta owe it a favor and stuff mm, like that. I can be um, your I can be your changing god, or I can be your dracogen. Great. Somebody clip that. Okay. Someone make fan art of that. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, so I thought that was at least a little bit interesting that the Drakajin really is like a big power player, and we don't know much about it. Um, That's exactly frust- that. exactly why this game frustrates me. <laughs> Well, it could be cool. Well, now that you're t- you're telling me there's a whole side quest I missed with the Dracogen, it might be cool. Maybe. You know? Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, in the abstract sense. <laughs> it's it's like if Elminster showed up and he was like, no, 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 I'm the red hat man and I'm scary. <laughs> Don't look into me. <laughs> Don't think about me. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, so, if at least with the Elminster, he's like, oh, there's a guy that shows up like three or four times and then talks to you, and then you you aren't an enfranchised person, but then later you talk to Cameron, and Cameron says, well, actually, the most powerful entity you ever met, you ever like engaged with in Baldur's Gate, was that guy in the red hat. And that's if you don't understand that, that's just like an outside reference you don't get. But mm-hmm. I, to my knowledge, there is not like a cultural... Uva to the, the to which the Dracogen is referenced. Right? Oh, you don't know about the Dracogen? Yeah, I don't. He can. Uh, he he came into prominence uh, when he was playing with the Golden State Warriors, and he could just sink a three from anywhere. You know, mm. I mean, it was really impressive. Um, now he's whatever. You know, mm-hmm. kind of a nerd, but uh, people appreciate him. You know, he was he's a good player. Mm-hmm. But that's the only. You know. He had that but, weird uh, Twitter controversy like a couple years back, and we just don't talk about it anymore. Yeah, people can't people can't not hit the tweet button, you know? Just delete mm-hmm. the app. You don't need it. Yeah. You don't need it on your phone. Not everyone needs to hear all the things you have to say. Anyway, we're getting off subject. Mm-hmm. Talking about the Dracogen. But, uh, so you get the Magmatic Analette. It took me actually forever to get it because I didn't realize... I just thought there are other things going on. So you, you get the magmatic analyte, you go all the way back to the portal. That's going to take you back to the bloom, which will take you back to the, the Dracogen. It wasn't working. Take you to, here's the thing. Hold on. Why are we getting this for the Dracogen? We didn't, we did not say that at the beginning. I don't think Dracogen will arrange a meeting between us and the uh, Mimovira. Okay. There we go. And, uh, yeah, so we get back to the portal, and there is no portal. Or it's locked up, I guess. Gasp. And there are cultists there. Oh, yeah. No, that's true. I, uh, intimidated one. Okay, so the cultists basically say, Ah, well, you know how that, you know, mineral, sentient minerals said that they didn't like to talk to us because they saw two minds in our in ourself? Well, it's because I'm actually the changing god, and, I, and I've been instructed by the changing god to apprehend ye. And so I just, like, intimidated him and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whoop your ass. <laughs> and I swear to God, his brain, his head exploded. Yes. And all of the other <laughs> cultists ran away. <laughs> yeah, I did the exact same thing. I was like, I'm gonna kick your ass up and down this crystal palace. <laughs> no, it's you're gonna be you're gonna be wondering what the hell this crystal place is. It's not just ruin you. <laughs> uh, yeah, and his head blew up. Yeah. The the this 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 whole thing is very contrived and weird to me. So the changing god is in this person's head because this person opened up a box and a like device came out and latched itself onto his brain. Mind you, this is nearly identical to the story for um gosh, what's his name? The guy in my party. The guy who's possessed by demons. I can't uh I can't come up with his Not name. Not Aladdin. Oh, no, no, Aridus, yeah. It's the same story. I went somewhere, I opened a box, something came out, it possessed me. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> We've all seen Hellraiser. Yeah, but they don't possess anybody. That's true. It's just it's just people in a box. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, interdimensional explorers attempting to, you know, fully uh, fully navigate all the realms of pleasure and pain. Yeah, we have such things to show you. <laughs> like balloon animals. <laughs> and uh, iron spikes through your hand. Yeah. Pain and pleasure in equal measure. Um, but, but yeah, anyway, so he his brain blows up. Because <laughs> I yelled at him so hard. Yeah. And then a- I... And then we get back to another place. And there's once again, once we get back to the trading post, 
There's no exit. There's no exit. You gotta. Ch so you have to use the magmatic analyte to like think real good and be able to mind meld with the bloom, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, the bloom's that tentacles that are sticking up conspicuously, like in the, yeah. in the room. And that's I why used... the analyte is so important for the dracogen is that this allows the dracogen to talk to the bloom to mm. maybe push out the mimovir a little bit more. Uh, I, I ended up using a tide at the very end on the bloom somehow. Oh, I don't, I, I don't know if I did that. I, so when I was talking to the bloom, like I had a couple different things I could do. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing I did was I asked the bloom to like let go of all the souls of the people or the minds of the people that it absorbed when it ate the trade post. Mm. That's what I did. And then I had it open the door. Mm. I don't think I used the tides. What did you use the tides to do? Oh, I had to use the tides to even open the door. Uh, I was not I, able to ask to to let go of people. Oh, I would. How many things did you do beforehand? Only one thing. Oh, okay. Maybe I did that too, and I just don't remember. I don't. Mm. I don't know actually. Um, but yeah. So I did that, and I took it back to the Dracogen, and he said, "Cool. Is there anything you want to do before later?" And I said, "No, nah, I think we're good." He said, "Okay. Here's the memo Vera," and I went and talked to the memo Vera. And the memo Vera. Do we, do we spoil it? Do we say what the memo Vera said? Sure. Put us on a fetch quest. Mm. Put, put, for some dude <laughs> named, like, Elard or something <laughs> like that. Not even someone we've heard of. You gotta go find my buddy. Yeah, go find a guy. Go do this level one peasant's quest. <laughs> it's, um, not, it's not a great, not a great feel. Honestly, I mean, thankfully, I'm glad it's a level one quest because I suck at combat in this game. I'm I, I'm sure that I would just like routinely lose to a level one encounter in this game with my party. That's whatever level. It's truly bad. It, or, <laughs> not, it's not truly bad. I'm sure that if people enjoy it, I think the people that like the combat in this game really like it. It's I think that those people me. are blessed. I, I do too. Yeah, I think it's like good for them. Yeah, it's not, it's not. I'm not. No criticism on my end. That's great. If you enjoy it, that is awesome. You should. You should take that to the grave. Like you should. <laughs> yeah. I like. I wish that I enjoyed it. I just don't. I, I don't think it's very interesting. I hate all the fettle stuff. <laughs> I think maybe if you're just like a real, like, um, crunchy kind of gamer, probably. I think it probably. I'm is. the crunchy gamer of us two. I. I, I, I well, I don't sure, but you're not the crunchy gamer. You're not playing Warhams every weekend. Mm. Like this is some real Warhammer wargaming kind of stuff mm. it's not for me mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah <laughs> leaving that in i feel like if i played warhammer i need to i need to make like a like a warhammer army that could just win or lose in five minutes well yeah there's like a 15 minute game you know that 15 minutes, 10 minutes yeah, too I'll long. Yeah, I'll buy, I'll, I'll, uh, we'll spend some Patreon money, and mm -hmm. I will, uh, I'll buy the little micro Warham game. We'll play it. Mm-hmm. We'll play it at the, uh, at our, at the Range Touch get-together, the, the annual Range, range Touch. Range Touch-a-thon? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, so, where, did this change your opinion about Torment Tides of Numenera in any way? This was, uh, completely neutral. Hmm. Did not improve, did not uh, impugn. Mm -hmm. It felt like a microcosm of a lot of the issues that I've felt I've been having before. If anything, I just feel like I've learned lessons from previously in this game, and I just immediately restart when I got into combat. So I probably had a better time this session than last session. Yeah, same. Same. I, as soon as the combat triggers, I try load my game, and I think, what, what went wrong? Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, I think I'm about in the same spot. I I really like stuff like the transdimensional scalpel, and then realizing that the game is like, like on one hand, I appreciate that like okay, you have chosen a violent answer or a, a violent option because the bloom is alive. Of course, it's going to defend itself. Then therefore, there are, you know, um, monsters that are going to appear. It's going to defend itself. Like I get the logic of why that occurs, but mechanically as a player. I feel like I'm being punished for figuring out something cool in the game. Yeah. And that sucks. That's like yeah. the worst feeling ever. Mm-hmm. 
it makes you acquiesce to whatever logic the game is attempting to like railroad you on basically you're like yeah. okay if you want me if you if you are punishing this i will go with the flow yep at which point you don't feel so much like an agent within the game as it is like you are just a viewer you are a passive consumer of the game's experience at that point yeah and that's not what i'm in like these isometric games for i i, w- I will say this like uh, when you when you said that it makes me think of this right like in um Baldur's Gate we could like role play decisions that we were making for certain reasons mm-hmm. in, as those characters and even in Planescape Torment I think could do that too um I don't think I could role play any decision I'm making in this game because so many ga- decisions I'm making are purely utilitarian trying to do the thing so this game will not punish me. I think that that puts the, that hits the nail on the head. It is about, are you, are you navigating the story within the game or are you navigating the game itself? Yeah. Right. And within Baldur's Gate, I felt like I was inside the game and making choices inside the game. Mm -hmm. Right. And like steering my little boat around within the ocean or pond of that game. In this game, I feel like Tides of Numenera is a river, and I am on a raft on that river, and I'm just trying not to wreck on the sides, on, like, the shore, Mm -hmm. right? I'm trying to stay in the flow. Maybe that metaphor went too far. You got two people on on that raft, or it's just you? Oh, are we going to talk about my mother? No. Did you want to? I don't know who else is on the. I don't know. Well, I was just going to ask if maybe one person was going to make it go in a circle or not. But. Uh, um. All right. Well, if you enjoy the show, you can support us on Patreon. <laughs> Check the link down at the bottom if you want to come talk about the show or anything else uh, isometric related or anything range touch related. You can come to our Discord. There's also a link there at the bottom of the screen. You can follow us on Twitter, twittercom touch. And, of course, hit that subscribe button and the like button at the bottom of this video. That will help us out a whole lot. Um, We talked about it last time briefly, I believe, or maybe we talked about it on our monthly podcast. But our next game that we are playing after this is Icewind Dale. I keep wanting to say Neverwinter Nights for some reason. Icewind Dale. That's going to be very exciting. It's going to finally get Danny excited about recording the show again. (laughs) Oh Lord, yeah, <laughs> and uh, you can follow me. If if anything, that's going to, like even if it is uh, frustrating in like a very different way. Icewind Dale is a is a game that like we on uh, on this show we tend to focus on like the big plot points and like kind of macro stuff. So uh, I just anticipate it being a a much more streamlined experience. But that, that'll that we we've still got one episode of this left and then we typically do like a big unwind like large, you know, big picture talk about a, a show before we move on to the next or about a game before we move on to the next game. Correct. So we got two shows, two episodes of of Torment after this one and then the next one after that will be Neverwinter Nights. You can nope. Uh, Icewind Dale. Uh, <laughs> you can follow me on twitter.com slash C Kunzelman. Danny, where can people find you? Uh, it's linked with uh, the range the of thing. Uh, other stuff. Uh, you can listen to Game Study Study Buddies, uh, our uh, range touch uh, sponsored show, me and Michael Lutz, where we talk about books of game studies our most recent episode is three hours long so get in on that you can see that at rangetouch.com as well as helpful homunculi our new show uh that that danny and i are doing it's about running tabletop games and it's meant to get people who aren't uh skilled or don't know much about running tabletop games and uh, helping them think about how to get started and how to actually run the game when you tell your friends that you're a big old nerd and they say, we don't believe you. You're not a nerd. Well, there are a couple things you could do. One is, you could just run away. The other is, you could just become a big part of our community. And then you just send, send your friends discrediting you links to this stuff. How could they possibly contest your status then?
Well, with that, we'll <laughs> see you next time. <laughs> Ciao. The wise Orlando. When shadows descend upon the land, our divine lord will walk alongside us as he walks. So saith the great Orlando. The world.